the guy who, if Cammy Harris and the people who are running her get their way, is going to be the first gentleman, Doug Emhoff. He has a whole bunch of thoughts, or maybe not, about what he likes to call toxic masculinity. Do you believe in that? Do you believe there's such a thing as toxic masculinity? Is there toxic femininity? I'll show you what Doug Emhoff said here in just a second. Today is the day the Lord has made, and these are the times through which God has decided we shall live. Douglas Emhoff, the husband of Cammie Harris, is an investor, very successful financially. One of his famous or infamous investments was in private prisons. Hey, there was a time when the left hated private prisons because it impacted the BIPOCs. There was a time when Cammie Harris laughed and cackled <laughs> about putting in prison, in jail, well, in jail, BIPOC parents, because BIPOC kids were tardy to school. She laughed. <laughs> she famously launched her political career through a sexual service she provided to Willie Brown. Now look, politics is slimy business. It's a slimy business, and there are many, many Republican politicians, male, who've had a whole bunch of affairs, and let's not pretend otherwise. Newt Gingrich, to his eternal shame, it's continuous. So I don't want to make a special case out of Cammie because she's a woman. I make it because if there's toxic femininity, wouldn't that include using your sexuality as a way to advance your career? And if there's toxic masculinity, if it exists, wouldn't it involve doing something Douglas Amhoff did? I want you to hear what he said during an interview, and you judge. Is this guy on the money, or is he, well, off the money? Money's really, really important. You ever notice that? If you don't have enough of it, uh, things can go poorly. You can get really, really nervous. This past week, when we saw the stock market plummet, 1,000 points. If you looked at your retirement account, and it was missing about 30% of your funds, you're probably in an imbalanced position. And if you're looking at inflation, this highly inflationary environment, and you haven't gone and checked to see how that's affecting your plans for retirement, may I suggest you do that? And in either case, you should get a free consultation from Zach Abraham, Chief Investments Officer of Bulwark Capital Management. He will look at every investment you have. He'll look at your goals. He'll look at your home, whether you own one or not. He'll look at your plans for retirement, and he will tell you you're set up to handle mass inflation or not, and you are at risk from the next stock market collapse or not. Now, he's not a soothsayer. He can't predict the future. But what he practices is risk management, which in my judgment requires active management of every single portfolio, which can reduce risk and volatility. So go to knowyourriskradio.com or call 866-779-RISK. That's knowyourriskradio.com or call 866-779-RISK to get a free no-obligation consultation. Bulwark Capital Management is an investment advisor representative of Trek Financial LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Investments involve risk. You could lose money. Past performance doesn't guarantee future results. Trek 24-244. Go to knowyourriskradio.com. Here's Douglas Emhoff talking about toxic masculinity, but then let's talk about what toxic masculinity might be. Let's talk about masculinity for a moment. Um, has being second gentleman changed your own view of perceived gender roles or what it means to be a man? Whew, that's, this is something I've, I've thought about a lot and something I've spoken about a lot. There's too much of toxicity, it, it, masculine toxicity out there. And there, it, we've kind of confused what it means to be a man, what it means to be masculine, where you've got this trope out there that you've got to be tough and you know angry and, and lash out to be strong. I just, it's just the opposite. You know, strength is how you show your love for people. Strength is how you are for people and how you have their back and how you, you stick up for other, other people and pushing up, pushing out against bullies. I mean, that's what I believe it is. So every time I can speak against to this toxicity, I, we're seeing it with our younger people, we're seeing it in our discourse and our politics, in the media, you're seeing it as it relates to so many of the issues that we're, we're pushing back on. So um, I think it's a problem, and I'm going to continue to use this platform every time I get to, to speak out against this toxic masculinity that's out there. Wouldn't it be toxically masculine 
uh, to use a power position or power advantage, say that you employ a nanny to, you know, bed her, to get in her pants, to be blunt and crude and gross. Would that be toxically masculine? Now, he has admitted to having an affair with a nanny. The rumor, as I understand it, is that he got her pregnant and then pushed her into getting an abortion. Would that be toxically masculine? All men can have this challenge. He's not alone in this. I don't hear him saying, oh, for instance, I used my power position to have sex with a nanny and then to pressure her into having an abortion. So he's not willing to admit that he used that. He's married to a woman who apparently used her, if you want to call it toxic femininity, to advance her political career. But he goes on to talk about defending people against bullies. This past week, two men beat the garbage out of women for money. I mean, they're amateur athletes, so they're not technically paid, but we know about endorsements and how those things roll out. They're getting something from it. And Cammie Harris's party stands for that. It's a good thing when women get beat up by men because men are women. You can't have masculinity or femininity when there's no female or masculines. There's none of that. Douglas Emhoff doesn't stand for defending people against bullies, let alone women. If you can't define a woman, you can't defend a woman. And on the topic of strength and being physically strong and able to defend yourself, that doesn't come with anger. Anger is not necessarily a masculine trait. It's certainly not defining of toxic masculinity. Anybody can get angry. There's women who fly off with the F word and the MF word and other things and slap things and kick things. Anger falls outside the fruit of the spirit. So does pride. So does preying upon people sexually. So does lording your power over others. It is not the fruit of the spirit. It is not godly. It comes from the other end of the spectrum. Douglas Emhoff would do good to examine God's word if he's ever read it. Well, if he hasn't, maybe he should start with one thing. How did the Lord Jesus act? The most masculine man who's ever existed. Why? Because he invented masculinity. And what was he? Weak? Hardly. No living human could go through what the Lord Jesus did on the cross. If you think you can, you're wrong because it wasn't, quote, just the torture. It was the cup of wrath that was poured out on his head, earned by humankind. He'd do well to look at Jesus as a model for masculinity. This is the Todd Herman Show. Please go be well, be strong, be kind, and please make every effort to walk in the light of Christ.